So we finally made it to our discussion of profit. And this is where we get to make some money for all these widgets we've been building. It should be clear that the way we compute profit is take our revenue and subtract our costs. And so that's also how we make our profit function. Now in this case, we're talking about capital P of X. This is not the demand equation. This is a profit function, capital P of X. And the way we make that function is simply take our revenue function and subtract our cost function. We can also talk about marginal profit, which is the profit we'll make by selling that and producing and selling that next item. And because we have these rules for derivatives, the marginal profit is simply the marginal revenue minus the marginal cost. So let's get right into an example. From example 4, assume the cost function of C of X equals 100X plus 200,000. And we want to find the profit function, the marginal profit function. We're going to plug 2,000 into the marginal profit function, and we're also going to sketch the graph of the profit. Now, in order to complete this exercise, we really need to know the revenue function from example 4. So let's add that to the picture. And so here's that revenue function from example 4. It was in a different video. Hopefully you check that one out before you're watching this one. And so now let's go ahead and uh, complete these four exercises. So for part A, we're looking for the profit function P of X. We simply take the revenue function, which is negative 0.02X squared plus 400X. And we subtract the cost function. Now listen, it's important that we can include these parentheses when we start because this negative sign right here is going to distribute to all the terms in the cost function. And then we can combine like terms. But I wanted to include these parentheses so that you understand we're taking the revenue function and subtracting the cost function. That subtraction may include distributing the negative to several terms, in this case two terms. And then we can combine like terms. So when we do this, there's only one x squared term. That's negative 0.02x squared. But we do have two x terms, 400x and negative 100x squared, or excuse me, 100x. And their sum is 300x. And then there's only one constant term. In this case now, because I distributed that negative sign, it's a minus 200,000. And this is our profit function. The marginal profit function then is the derivative of that thing, which is going to be negative 0.04x plus 300. And then finally, to compute the marginal profit, at a production level of 2,000 widgets. We simply plug 2,000 into this equation where x is right here. And I've already done that on my calculator and you can verify my calculations, but this turns out to be uh, $220. $220 per, per widget. And that's an approximation of the amount of money we'll make if we produce and sell the 2,000 first widget. We'll make $220, which is good news. We're still making money. Finally, let's take a look at the graph. So part D asked us to graph our profit function. So this is uh, P of X. typed it in on a computer grapher similar to say desmos.com and you can see that what we're going to end up wanting to locate uh, is the place where we're going to make the most money our profit function maxes out way up here right way up here 
at over 900,000. And it's going to occur somewhere between 6,000 and 8,000. And so as we get more calculus under our belt, we're going to learn how to figure out exactly where we're going to make the most profit. For now, let's just focus on the fact that we can create a profit function, we can do some marginal analysis, we can uh, find the derivative, and we can compute the marginal profit at various production levels.